Hallo? Herzlich willkommen. 35k. 35k-k.de. So, guten Abend allerseits. Ähm, herzlich willkommen, Henna Winkler. Herzlich willkommen, Stefan Krieghaus. Vielen Dank, dass ihr da seid und vielen Dank für den Film. Wir haben gerade überlegt, ob wir das Gespräch nicht lieber auf Englisch halten sollten. We just uh, thought about talking spontaneously in English, because I heard some of you are only English speakers. Is that okay for everyone? Is das für alle okay, dass wir das auf Englisch machen heute Abend? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so... I'm going to start to uh, say a few words about uh, you guys. So, um, Henna Winkler, you were born in um, in Gießen, an der Lahn. That's what um, Wikipedia says, yeah, at least. Wikipedia lies. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so I tell I us the I truth. I grew up in Gießen, but I was born somewhere else. Okay. And um, <laughs> and Stefan, Stefan, you you also um, grew up in Gießen, right? Or you moved to Gießen to at some point? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. We I grew up in Gießen as well. And is that where you met? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, you went first to to Offenbach mm -hmm. um, to study there um, uh, visual communication. And then you went to um, to Hamburg to study film at Hive Become. Yeah, but um, Offenbach is an art school with a film class as well. So I studied film there, but um, continued in Hamburg. Yeah, they are both film. They are, they are both art schools with film classes. Okay, and you, Stefan, you went to Berlin and you studied history and cultural science. Is that right? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, And then, so you were in Berlin and you were in Hamburg. Um, how did you um, find together as well to collaborate? So um, maybe you can tell about a bit how you found each other again. Um, have you kept in touch all the time? And how did this uh, process work of writing this script together? How this idea came? Maybe you can tell a bit about this. You um, like um, I when I'm when I moved to Hamburg. Um, my girlfriend lived already in Berlin, so I, I spent a lot of time in Berlin, and um, so and we we know each other from our childhood, so we were always in contact. And um, I did my final short film in Berlin, and Stefan was. Um, worked in the production field like produced it from Berlin and so we we worked on this uh, short film together and later we decided to write a feature like this short film was shown at Seesüchte you know the f festival and um, a commissioning editor came and asked me if I would like to make longer feature and so talked about it and decided to start to write one and this is how it so it was clear it that you would uh, involve <laughs> Stefan it, it was obvious that you would involve Stefan in the writing process and that you would do it together um, from I think we talked a lot about film and for part of the time we also lived together so um, film was something we talked a lot of and um, we know each other from a long time and so uh, uh, maybe you say something like how was it uh, yeah Hannah moved into my flat because it was very close to his girlfriend's flat so um, um, and then uh, for a very short time we ran a cinema together with super 8 films and then we kept talking on films and then and, and, and Hannah asked whether we shouldn't write something together so so we started. So how did this idea come up about this school trip? Um, <laughs> like I, um, I think this is it's an experience everyone has, and um, for me, this period in time is very interesting because in such a short uh, period of time, there 
you make so many decisions which are important for your whole life in a way and so I thought this is an interesting period of time and um, yeah and for research we uh, um, we f went with a friend of Stefan who is a teacher to a school trip and like made some video research and thought this is pretty interesting and we want to make something out of it. Yeah, there was this kind of abstract idea of you go somewhere, you be somewhere else, and things happen. And then you come back and you don't know, did these things actually happen or did I th just dream them more? I don't know. So there is a f fuzziness or a blurriness with your memory and um, <coughs> what you memorize is kind of a um, yeah, a certain strange feeling. And this was mainly, I think, the initial point we tried to find. And con concretely speaking, like how did you how did you write this together? Like did you meet and write on the script together? Did you yeah. discuss it and Stefan wrote it at home or you wrote it at home? How, no, how did you collaborate? Most of the time we both sit in the same room and one was talking and the other one was typing. And sometimes one was making coffee and the other one <laughs> was typing. But like we, we, we swapped and like I read Stefan's uh, lines and he wrote, uh, he read mine and we changed and like, but we were literally um, doing it together. like. Now, I, um, my last um, film I wrote together with Ulrich Köhler, and like then we didn't spend much time in the same room. So nowadays you do it with um, Google Drive or whatever. But for these, for our first films, we um, we sit for ages together in the same small room and wrote and like yeah. His girlfriend was jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like. I, I you know how long writing how much time writing takes how long did it take <sighs> um actually it didn't take if you compare it to um to some other projects who i haven't um finished <laughs> it was pretty fast so from the idea to the film it was two years but um like in this time it was like from the morning and till the night like we sit and talk and so it's a lot of time and we also had children like and it was not always easy as you can imagine <laughs> and the main character um how did you come up with this guy is it kind of a reflection of one of you guys of someone you knew um how did you construct this this character mm. i think we shared memories so there's a lot of henna in it. <laughs> I hope not too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but it's probably both. It, it, it was like like a lot of uh, talking. Mm. And and like you know, finding out who that guy is. Yeah, we, we, we want to have, of course, it's clear that we want to have someone who's not able to communicate and like it's um, who is like not able to show feelings. And like, yeah. Why? Um, yeah, I think this is the the core of the whole um, film, and um, I think, of course, in this um, age, it's difficult. But I think it also stands for I hope for something bigger, and like for for like for how conflict starts, or I don't know. Yeah. And um, at what point? Um, Oh no! I want to ask another first. Um, like, the the if you watch the film, it so it looks also documentary like, right? So I'm interested in in how much of what we saw just uh, saw all of us here. How much is there of the script? How 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 during the shooting? How how s strongly you wanted to stick to it? Um, we wrote a script, but we gave it just to the three main actors, and the other ones didn't know exactly what we were doing they had just a page of like a very short expose 
and we told them, oh, now we're going to the museum or so. So for them, it was more like a school trip. And the other ones, like the ones who, um, like the main actors, they had a script, but we, they just got it for a day for, I don't know, I remember, they, they got it for, to read it, but then we took it back so that they don't ask their mothers to learn the dialogues by heart or something. They know what they're going to do and then in the morning we gave them pages so that, um, that they were not too prepared for it. And of course there were scenes who are imp improvised, like where they where the scenes who work more like a game that we say, oh, make him drunk or um, I don't know, things like this. So it's a mixture. And Stefan, you were second assistant director, right? Can you, can you, or that's how it's credited at least? Yeah. Can you tell yeah. us what, what, what you did on the, on the set? Um, mainly keep talking. So, so, so whenever Hannah had uh, something uh, that needed to be discussed, like, or like, like a rehearsal and, 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 um, we, we, we talked about it, how, how does it correspond with the script. Uh, with the first film Hannah did, there was a script, and I think there was, the, the film was completely different from what was written. Uh, the, the, the what do you mean the first film? The Abschluss film. Uh, the short film. The short film, yeah. The short film Hannah did before was scripted, but Hannah did something completely freely so I thought when we started writing okay we're gonna write something down and then we'll see what happens um, but this one was mainly along the um, how do you call that it, it, it um, the the action followed the script but the the dialogues and the scenes were like done on the day People when they got the scenes and read over it, and then there was a lot of improvisation and and rehearsing dialogues. Okay, um, uh, we we ask you um, that's the thing we we um, try to um, implement now in this uh, series of evenings to think about um, seven words that you associate <laughs> with this film with uh, very randomly. Um, and I would be interested in what what came in your mind. It changed. I, I learned. Uh, I, I thought about seven words, but I, I think it's wrong now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like. I I have a a better story. If you ask me for eight words, I can tell you afterwards. But I I um, tried to say one sentence with seven words which are good for people who want to shoot at the coast because it's not very easy because the weather at the coast changes permanently. <laughs> 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 no, but I, I had I th thought about another th sentence which is not really a sentence because I, I knew before that he would ask me this. Um, but it's not... Um, it's not a real sentence bec because it has no verb, but um, this is something I thought later because in a way this is more what the film maybe is or what some people hate with the film and others like. And um, this film was shown, like it has premiere at the Berlinale, but then um, it was shown on several festivals and it was, um, it was shown in a festival in the US and later I was, I think it was at the Berlinale, the leader from the festival came to me and said, oh, um, I was searching for you and I want to give you a present. And there was this screening. Um, we, we showed your film on our festival and, and I have these, we asked the, I think that it was students who came to the screening and we asked the students to write something about your film and I want to give it to you. And he had these, like, uh, lots of these little questionnaires or papers with the which the students had to fill out. And on the top of it, there was, a, like, it was, like, the, the worst mar grade, like, no points, or something like this. And it says, um, no, no script, no plot, no acting, no good. <laughs> <laughs> 
and I, I said, oh, this is a strange present. Like, why, why do you give it to me? Like, this is not something... You, like, he was really enthusiastic and he was a nice person. But for me, it was, oh, what kind of strange present. <laughs> like, and he was searching for me to give you this. And, like, the, f the second one was also very bad. And, like, at the end, it w went better and some were li liked the film. But it was not something which, which was I was a bit surprised. But then I thought, like, in the way... It's a bit what I wanted to do, like film where you don't see the script, where you don't see the acting, and where you don't see the plot. Mm, of course you see it, but this was the intention. Maybe it would be better if it was written minimal plot and not no plot, but um, <laughs> but this was a sentence I, was th I thought of, but it's eight words. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, Talking about this minimalism also in the acting, um, I, I read once a thing that you said um, that you like when actors speak as if they would come into a door and just say hello. Um, and how do you um, work with the actors to, to get to this kind of, I don't, that's where my English maybe ends a bit like this with this just... I, th I think 90% is casting, I would say. Because like this is it's we, how many people like how many kids did we cast like we did street casting they are all non-professional actors the only one who is a professional actor is a, the teacher but everyone else is like people we met in the streets and we we made we like for the whole period of writing we were like when we didn't write we go and were looking for people who could play in the film like it was at the same time so. I think one and a half year, maybe, I would say. Yeah, that was my seven sentence, a uh, seven word sentence. Fine cast, it was a lot of work. You did it together? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 it, it took very long. How do you do a street casting? Like, where do you, where did you go? You yeah, hang no out on Alexanderplatz and wait for somebody to pass by. <laughs> <laughs> no, but normally, like, we m mostly we, we both didn't do it together because it's a bit scary. Like, if two men ask, oh, you want to be in my movie? And, like, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, that was so, so um, we had, like, um, most of the time there was, I think it was Barbara Pilling who, um, who and yeah like uh, we it's i think it's easier if it's uh, um a boy and a girl who approach teenagers <laughs> because it's not i think it's not as scary as to adult men um so we just yeah talk to them and ask them if they uh, want to come to an audition and then we made an audition mostly with a written dialogue and with an improvisation and um with the main actor he was not very good in the first edition, so but I thought he has something which is very interesting, like the way he uh, he behaves, the way he uh, he was very different from the other ones, and I from the first moment I thought this is the character I would like to see, and I think this is he he has some some something like a mystery or something which interests me. And so we did several auditions and he came back and he got better and better and then at the end he was, yeah, every, everyone was convinced. Even in shooting he, he got better while shooting. And and he was uh, the youngest by far. So he, he was... 15. Yeah, he was 15 and the others were like 17. So it took you a lot of time to get this huge cast, right? We um, prepared uh, a few pictures that we would like to show if this works, so that we can talk a bit about them. Maybe meanwhile a question, um, like how, I mean you started to, to um, write this script together, so it was kind of a baby you had somehow, and at some point for you Stefan it was time also to 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 leave it a bit right in a way um how did how did it feel was this yeah how did it feel well the agreement in the first place was i'd i'd like to be with the shooting um and um as as i didn't expect there would be anything of the script in the film 
um, I didn't feel like let it go. I was I was rather surprised that some elements of the script ended in the film. So um, for for me it was great. I thought the first day of shooting was very impressive. Like a very m a lot of people doing what we wrote <laughs> felt quite good. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting moment. Like if it's the first um, feature and you imagine something and then people really do it. It's like it's strange that like later it becomes yeah. Yeah. So I just, uh, because we do a podcast out of this uh, thing as well, so I'm just quickly describing what we are seeing. So we see a, a total wide, wide shot um, of, a, of, a, of the sea. Um, um, and there, are s there is the, the whole class, basically, I would say around 20 people who are just walking towards the camera, like a bunch of young kids. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm wondering, I mean, it's, it's, it's so many people for a first film to handle, right? Like, how, how challenging was this um, for you as, a, as a, an upcoming director? Um, I think it was not such a big challenge because they were all very nice. And, like, for them it was like a school trip. And we had also one person who was responsible for them. And um, for me it was... It was not not such a. It was not difficult. No. They had a lot of party. <laughs> <laughs> it w it, I think the things that were difficult that they were like tired, because they they. During the first weeks of shooting, they all were there, and and for them it was like a school trip. They 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 partied a lot. Yeah, but this was like this is what we wanted. Like it was not like they couldn't do much wrong in a way, because this is this is how a school class is like. They they go on the beach and they do not know what they have to do there. Like this is. <laughs> 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 and was it clear from the beginning on to f shoot f in Poland and also to shoot at this place? Maybe you can talk a bit about how you found this this place. Um, no, actually, it wasn't clear from the beginning. Like the first draft we did was um, going to Italy. Like the idea was going to Italy, but um, we discussed it a lot, and also with our commissioning editor. And I don't know. Like at the end, this was a place. Um, I saw some photographs of it and. Um, I think this is, um, f yeah, for me, uh, my feeling was like if um, we're going to Poland, it's a very obvious decision because it's the closest border, but it becomes, in a way, uh, it becomes a new layer because there is this strange relationship between Germany and Poland and the history of the Second World War. And like, there is a lot of, like, if you go there as a ch school class, and there is something in the air and this makes it everything deeper in a way because like it's not like just meeting someone from france or so it's it's a bit different and this makes it i would say it gives a new layer into it w w i think we spent weeks on thinking about whether they needed to go to a concentration camp until we we finally said okay maybe we don't have to do it but but it took a long there were were a lot of discussions yeah because between like us we yeah because like um we are both from west germany and in west germany if the school class goes to poland there is always the trip to a concentration camp like it's part of the um, but it's i think in Bel we thought this is it will not work it will destroy everything if we do it and so we decided not to do it and from a school class from Berlin it's not so I would say not so obvious because it's more um, more common to go to Poland and like there are school classes who go to Minzestreuer so I understand so um, because you also Stefan as a culture uh, who studied cultural studies but it was not like a, an, an aim to do like a milieu study somehow of a of a 
of a special place also of a, maybe a post-socialistic um, world or whatever like that that was not it could have been in Italy as well no I don't, don't think there was uh, such a thought uh, we traveled the coast in Poland and had a look at all the places that were kind of reachable and then and I found that one and um, it, it look good yeah f for me i like places also places where i know that they will disappear in a way like they are not the same now as they were and this is i think this is interesting if you film somewhere and you know this will not stay like this for a long time yeah when seeing it now i was surprised how much ethno ethnography there was so so there's a lot of like uh, shots on like traveling through Polish villages, which um, which sometimes were taken on the way to somewhere or something like that. But but it's actually twenty years ago, so or eighteen nineteen years ago. So it 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 shows something that is completely gone, as well as that place probably. You're just saying uh, twenty or eighteen years ago. Would you feel able to to write a script, let's say the same script, um, with kids from from today? <laughs> We are older. <laughs> yeah, m my feeling is like um, if I would write it now, I would take more the position of the teacher. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Um, so getting back uh, just a little bit to the to the post uh, script part and to the working to the work with all those actors, what what is different? I mean, you who now um, have worked also with professional actors, what is the m the difference uh, for you? How, how do you speak differently to a to a, to a, to a non actor than to an actor? Um, <laughs> in a way, yes, and on the other s on the other hand, no. But I, of course, like my feeling is like. Um, with actors often get better from take to take and non-professional actors are often the best in the first take but it's not with everyone and like it's some you it's that it, sometimes it's different but i would say if more or less like it's sometimes like this and so it's difficult to mix it like if you have actors and like with um my second film where we also wrote together Lucy we it's there are more professional actors in it and it was like I enjoyed it but sometimes it was difficult because they had a very different way how to uh, how to work how to uh, learn dialogues how to get better from take to take or how to get worse and sometimes one is great and the other one is not great anymore and like in in this film it was more I would say on a similar level and was it difficult for you um, because I mean you have all those young kids and you are somehow now coming to tell them what to do and I mean they're all like 16 and you are an adult man how did how did they was it difficult to to let to that they accepted you I would say as their director um no I would say the other way around like it's it's sometimes it's difficult to show them that we are not an authority where you like that they can also say something like of course they like to like kids want to be in films like if you ask them and most of them of, of course I, I i can do this and i, I come also there are very few who, um mostly the, the most interesting ones who say oh no maybe not like but um if if they accept like it it was not difficult but sometimes like we had to joke around a little bit that they are not too uh, that they don't see us as the director, like in a way. And yeah. Okay, I think we'll jump over to the to the next picture we prepared and talking a bit about the camera work. Um, um, it's not perfect to for you maybe to to see yeah, it, but but, but you know. <laughs> 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 um, so this is a picture um, at the at the swimming pool where you see the the three main characters um, sitting um, at the swimming pool. The girl in the middle and the two I would say love interests on her left and on her right and. Um, 
I think it's uh, an image that draw that draw our attention uh, somehow because uh, it falls a bit out. We thought um, yeah. than uh, the rest of the the, the 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 cinematic language that your film uses in the way that um, th everything is quite mm, moves a lot and feels quite um, yeah. spontaneous. And this is quite a set image, quite symmetrical. Um, yeah, how did it come to this image? Yeah, it. <laughs> Like, w there was a lot of discussion in the editing room if we take it or if we keep it out, because in a way it's not, it's, as you said, it's different from the other images, and this is a, an image which, like, what we normally didn't want to do, like, show something to, like, the other, um, all the other images are images where the camera observes or tries to get something but is not um does not know what's going to happen and here like this is showing to the audience and like there was a, a long discussion how long it will be and if we take it or not but um i like it <laughs> <laughs> at the end sometimes of course we m like if you make a film you ha you write down some rules or you have some rules in your head like what what does a camera do and we had the idea like the camera is like a person, it's observing, it's an eye level, it's, um, it's, it never takes a position where a person could not be and like decisions like this. Um, and in a way this is a bit out of it, but sometimes I think it's also good if you don't stick to your rules. <laughs> because, yeah. That uh, question of showing and not showing leaves me to or leaves us to the next uh, image actually, um, because as we we felt this was an interesting um, thing in your film definitely. Um, um, so that's the scene of of, of the, the the in the bed. Um, uh, it's a s we split it. We it's two s two shots basically, two single shots. Uh, once the the the, uh, the girl and once the boy um, just before they have sex. That's at least what you would su make us suggest but it, d it, it is not shown yeah. and this uh, scene is uh, just after um, the, the the scene uh, where um, uh, how do you say uh, mood probe um, like at the the courage test in the water um, where which is the, the from a dr dramaturgical point the, the twist let's say of the of the film right but where you also don't see um, the, the dramatic the, the dramatic point yeah, how how did you um, decide to not show what to show and what not to show? Yeah, like first I would like to say something about the jumping on from the bridge because of course. this is um, this is another moment where we we had the decision like w as I said before what the camera should do, but we said oh there is a stuntman coming jumping these seven meters in the water and we don't see it, so we can't do this like. There has to be a camera which sees it, and like we had two cameras, and sometimes I did the second camera, like and for this scene when he jumps, I, we built something and I filmed it from above, like how he jumped and he he really jumped into the water, and then we saw it on the in the in the editing and said like it's, it, it, why are we showing this? It's it's stupid because this is not our language like we are showing like normally we don't show things and why do we show it here like it's, uh, we, we kept kept it out so we actually we didn't need someone who jumps into this water and, and it was really dangerous but um, we didn't need it but we thought we had to and yeah sometimes you know later and we didn't take this and um, these scenes like with um, the, the bad scenes I think Bad scenes with non-professional teenage actors are not easy. Um, and of course, they are always talking before about it. And it's always a mixture of I want to do it and I don't want to do it. And giggling around and calling before the girlfriend or the boyfriend. And um, like it's, it's, uh, it's, they, are, they were very nervous. And um, we filmed more than we saw. But but um, my feeling was because it's about yeah beca because it's about people who can't communicate like this moment when they undress without talking is the only interesting moment like it's not interesting how they 
um, kiss or fuck or whatever. I don't want to see this, but I want to see the moment when they are not able to tell the other one what they feel. And this is moment which I'm interested in. Okay, should we put the lights uh, on again and... Um, yeah? Okay, that, yeah, okay, then we have one last uh, picture of uh, uh, which is a quite uh, unique <laughs> moment in the film. Um, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the sea um, at the beach, b b um, b uh, let's say a POV actually from the main character with uh, pigs and um, it's um, the place, uh, it's, it's there where, um, where Marek jumps from, from f in the water. So um, what interested us first is um, is this planned? Was this planned? That those pigs? Did you order those pigs for the film? No, we didn't order them. They they just wanted to be there. Support. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. We didn't we didn't expect them. They they were just there. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. Because it, it, it has somehow, I mean, it makes total sense. I think it's a very nice uh, image. Um, but it has somehow a kind of almost a, another, almost a magical, I would say, dimension mm -hmm. in a way. Um, so we wondered. Um, okay, so now let's maybe move on to the to the editing part as well a bit um just a few questions about that like um how how much you you, you said you did also the second camera at some point yeah, I think there are two or three s three scenes i think where where like it's the car accident, the jumping from the bridge, the drinking, which we shot with two cameras. I think that's it more or less, yeah. Yeah, the the party scenes in the hotel. Yeah, so yeah. Three or four scenes which we did with two cameras, yeah. So it was like a lot of material you had in the end, I can no, imagine. Or not that it much. was not so much. It was like it was shot on sixteen mil and we hadn't didn't have much money and it's not like you guys shoot now with digital <laughs> like it's I don't know I think it's something like eight to eight to one or something like this. It's not so much. So uh, just one last thing that would interest me: How many takes would did you do? Like just average, just a number, more or less? Can you say yeah, maybe eight? <laughs> If it's eight to one, like I don't know. <laughs> And Stefan, were you involved in the editing process? No, I saw some some versions. And and we talked about it, but um, but the the editing was done by Hannah and um, Bettina mostly. And do you remember how it was when you first saw the film? Then how it was for you? I liked it. And no, I thought it's yeah, it's something that f luckily has stayed. So once you see a film, you see something. Yeah, special, or whatever, and 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 this happened. So, and this with all the films are like, this happens, still. And and so yeah, I I I liked it. And how was it for you uh, today, seeing the film again? Ah, uh, that was my second seven-word sentence. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> First films always have something very direct. So I, I was um, surprised because um, um, writing always was like we wrote a scene and then we wrote another scene and wh then we took three scenes off. And it, it wasn't like having 200 pages and getting down. It was always like getting getting more. So the the, the f The guy who wrote uh, uh, wrote a recommendation for the medium board. He said uh, that's going to be 60 minutes TV film because it was such a short script. So we only had like 85 pages, and um, um, we had less. Yeah, m maybe 82. So no it was c kind of, uh, uh, but but the the whole writing thing was like. 
like writing up and not writing mm. down. So I was, um, um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm still like, I, I, still, I still, see, I still see things which I would love to change. It's For horrible. Them. Twenty years later, and I don't talk about it. But there's, I think uh, there's three changes which I would, um, which I would do. Uh, I would, I wish I could do them. Can you tell us? <laughs> like the the first thing is I would start with the music later at the end. I think it's horrible to start so early with it, and it's uh, like, in I think it needs time to like, and. Pardon? The last yeah, the last image. I, yes, I think it starts too early. Um, then I think the um, I would cut the mods, um, like the how in, in the bus. I would cut earlier. I think this is a mistake to to keep this in, which may, would be much better. Like, um, yeah. I don't tell you the third one. <laughs> It's enough. Okay, uh, I mean, I have more questions, but I think I would also like to hear yours. Um, so whoever has one, just raise your hand. We will pass the mic so that we hear the voice also later. So, yes. Ich würde gerne wissen, äh, wie ihr euch die Figur Ronnie ähm, oder was ihr euch vorgestellt habt als familiären Hintergrund. Or, sorry, I'm speaking English. Um, <laughs> uh, how do you imagine the character Ronnie? How's his familiar background? And how did he grow up? And what did you imagine him to do in the future or after the movie ended? <laughs> there, there actually, there was a version where we s we where he where we start started in Berlin and we uh, cut it off like um, it was for us it was clear like there was also a dialogue in which it said the other class went to London and to and one to Paris and the ones who like um, uh, the ones who just make Realschulabschluss they they just can go to Poland and things like this and we cut it all off like um I think it's the all the kids we uh, casted are from East Berlin, and this was also like what we decided the class should be, and um, and it's it's I would say um, <laughs> we talked about it. I, it's so long ago. I, I don't want to say something wrong. Like we ha had an idea about the background and that it's n it shouldn't be too uh, um, like it shouldn't be posh but it shouldn't also be uh, too uh, low class like it's um, but, uh, what do you what could you say like it's yeah we did talk about it and there has been this beginning where they all were at home and packing their things and having dialogues with their parents and were brought to the bus and um, then took off for the trip and that was in the script for l for quite a while and then we decided we don't need it so i think with the with the person of ronnie it's the same it's it's rather i think we talked a lot about would somebody do that Or would he do that? So the 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 main question always was, do we believe him doing that? And and it didn't go too much into biography. No, but because like <laughs> if you um, work with non-professional actors, it's also a bit like it's difficult to make something completely different out of them, like to tell them, oh, this is your biography and you have a single mother and you were well, like, how could he play this? Like, so it's a bit like we had an idea, but we didn't care too much about it, I would say. Okay, interesting. <laughs> 
uh, for me this is uh, referring to that question as well like I felt uh, a lot of pain <laughs> watching him um, and I'm just interested in like maybe why he already asked a little bit that question like why are you interested in this kind of I say that's what I saw a boy who never breaks out like a boy who can never really do something positive uh, yeah <laughs> such a relief <laughs> otherwise I would I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah just uh, interesting for me that um, obviously there's some some part of realism I guess to it um, but didn't you maybe yourself wish for him to I don't know show some more positive sides and so on um, yeah, of, of course, I, I hope you. everyone wishes this. This is the idea that you wish it and you don't get it. Okay. Like, um, of course, this is it's painful and this is what we want. But I think, like, life sometimes is painful. <laughs> and um, if you make a film, you want to show a specific part of and you want to point at something. And of course, I think also teenage years can be painful. And so um, it's. I I don't want to show every part of life. I want to show something specific and as um, like as precise as possible. So I don't want to like what does it like? There are a few scenes in which he laughs, but what does it give to you? Because we want to have a character who is not able to show feelings. And yeah. Like for me, but I, I don't know if this maybe it's. Um, bit too high but in a way um, um, yeah uh, like um, something like Der Fremde by Camus um, I don't know if yeah of course many of you know this is, was a book which I, I liked a lot and in a way like these um, it's, um, yeah like how people what people could do if they don't um, I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but do you want to say? Pardon? Yeah. Um, it's difficult to explain, but for me, it's not about the character with all his different traits. I want to point a specific, at a specific part, and I want it to have it painful, also for the audience, because I think this is a painful, could be a painful period. <laughs> um, did the <laughs> sorry? Um, did any of the actors con or not non-actors continue acting or actually go we um, went into acting? Yeah, the like the blonde one, Maxi Wabel, she became an actress, and I think she did also something before, and she is pretty good, I would say. Um, and the two main actors are not actors anymore. Sad. Yeah, like ah, of course, uh, but he's also not an actor anymore. But there's another guy, the one with the head, and he played in the second film we wrote, like in Lucy. He is a main character, and he sometimes is is acting, but he is also like his main profession is something else. Is that like the girl as well? I think she has to. Use yeah, she's great. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you. Uh, I heard you said a few times like he's not able to show his feelings and so on and so on. And uh, uh, I, I, I want to ask you how do you mean that because I don't see that he is not able to show his feeling. I see rather that he's not able to verbalize his feeling. His feeling is very obvious to me. Like he, his state is obvious. Even the girl, she asked him, are you okay? So like, you know, she, uh, like everyone feels his feelings. Everyone feels him not being right. He's just not expressing it in a way. That was yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so that's the first thing. And the question, which I had, I, I was um, the ending of the of the film. Um, during the film, we are st quiet with the characters all the time. Like, th I rarely see shots where there are no characters in it. I mean, of course, there is like some montage sequence of the you know, road and so on, so on. And uh, th then comes this twist with the Marek, yeah. 
um, and I was thinking like the ending works for me perfectly like I really like it but I was thinking about them how it's going to uh, in which way it's going to happen and then like this last shot you kind of leave the character like suddenly mm -hmm. and and it's not settling it's not like you leave the character and so there is like a, uh -huh, and there is a shot and this shot lasts so the duration of it and the rhythm like you no know, suggests me but it's like you leave the character there's a shot there's a ship there's a cut and there is a sudden music and now talking about the script like was this written in the script like do you end the script with uh, with a description of a sea and like you know with the sentence and there is a sea and the boat which is like, or you can how how did you how want, like editing wise how did you how did you like come to this ending <laughs> Like uh, the ship is of course not in the script because the, sh the ship is is um, this is documentary, but it was clear that we leave the character and we show the empty beach. This is something I don't know exactly what was written, but um, actually, um, when we talked about it, we had the idea of showing e much more, like Im lost, like like images without anything in it like a bit like um the ending of Leclise or something where you yeah. like go away from the characters but it didn't um fit to uh, the story in a way like these now how many images are these i think three images or so I, at the end um i don't know exactly what we wrote do you remember Yeah, there were there were um yeah there was an empty beach and but there was another version where there was a beach with a body as well <laughs> so um then we decided no we no we don't show that one um well that was rather a decision that was made in editing so um but the the, the feeling of mm. of desertedness was w was scripted um so my question is um throughout the film it retains a pretty consistent cinematic vocabulary and i was wondering if there were any specific film movements or attributes of film movements that you were inspired by mm, yeah of course but it's um i have to think about what one in this um we like with the uh, dp we watched a lot of films but i'm not sure exactly what what we saw but um what i remembered was like um that we want or i wanted to have in a way a rough um feeling and that it's not like perfectly um that that these images are not images for themselves and i know that i showed her films by paul morrissey i think you you know um, something of this like where which are completely rough and like and um and french films from like maurice piella and um and what else um, what do i remember Gem ah uh, yeah of course like um one which um one film which came um, short before the film came out was l like um von Valeska Krisebach Mein Stern which I which was one of my favorite german films from this period of time and of course like the camera is different but like for me we decided a lot before when we saw this film but it was for me a huge support that it's possible to, to do something so strong with non-professional actors and i this i don't know my um, be my star uh, mein stern the film which i hope most of you have seen it's a masterpiece i would say and um yeah this was of course a german film we watched
Um, may I ask how you imagine that uh, Marek died? Like, did he just like drown because he was drunk, or did he kind of hit his head or something? Because it kind of, when I saw it, it didn't make sense to me. Because before you showed that he's a really good swimmer and he's an athletic 18-year-old, <laughs> like usually, and it's not that far away from the beach. But it's pretty dangerous to jump there because you do not know what's um, what's in the water, and um, never do this. Um, jump in the dark <laughs> um, if you do not know what's like also the the stuntmen who jumped they, they uh, for for hours they search on the ground if there is anything because this is pretty dangerous so um, you can imagine what can happen if you jump um, and there is I don't know a bicycle <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thanks for the film. Um, I, uh, I have a question that may sound a little bit provocative and I don't want to be rude, but uh, I'm honestly interested as like I, like many here, want to become filmmakers or work in film. Um, so the internet says that your last film, Lucy, was in 2006 and now I think this year there's going to be uh, a voluntary year. What did you do in between? Was there other project that didn't work out or what did you live off? Yeah, there were like, I I taught for six years at HFF Potsdam Babelsberg and now for four years at Met Film School Berlin. And I have two kids, <laughs> so a lot of lot to do. And of course I had projects who were not financed. I, I tried, um, but it's like a lot of people trying. And it's not everything works and so it took some time. I did some shorts. Mm. Um, yeah. Also, thank you for the film. Um, I have more like of a general question. Like, um, did I mean, you s did the film turn out like what you set out to do, or did like the work with the non-actors and during the shooting you discover like something new, or just like a bit that transformed the film in itself, or just like a single scene or something? We were like, oh, this lightning in a bottle. I did not see this or so. Uh, what do you mean it was lighting in the ball? Yeah, I don't know. Like, was it like, did you just like, oh, this is the script? Yeah, we want to more to more improvise, but it's basically what we set out to do. Or was there like, because these are non-actors and like, I think you never know what they actually will bring to it. And was there like something they brought to it and the other collaboration gave you that which just added for you personally a new dimension to the film? Or you found something new in the film for you? So th this this kind of nice scene when they are both on the thing they jump off later on so we had a dialogue scripted where they like insulted each other a little bit and he and there, there was something written like oh, oh nice shoes i had those when i was younger and then they were asking each other how old are you and he had to admit that he was like no he, he pretended to be 17 and, and then the other one said okay you look le younger and then uh, R Ronnie said, thanks. So this wasn't written. So he said it, it just came up by him, which was surprisingly, I found. Um, I would have liked to write it, but I didn't. <laughs> mm. there, there, there were moments. Yeah, for me, for me, it worked out. And I think they, they gave so much into the film that for me it works but it depends on you because like we are the filmmakers and the question is does it work for for you or like do you believe them or like of course <laughs> okay so i think we slowly get to an end i wonder just uh, to finish, maybe you said you teach uh, at med school now. Is there anything particular, because we, there are a lot of uh, young aspiring filmmakers here that you try to teach. Can you sum it up in two sh no, sentences? No, it's Im impossible to sum it up in two sentences, but um, I think, yeah, watch films, do fi shoot whenever you can, like, what, what can I say? Okay, I, I actually one last Do you want to say something? question. Yeah, one last question was there like Yes. 
Okay, um, before it was referring to something, now I have to concentrate. Um, yeah, once I wanted to say thank you, it's a really amazing film. I wanted to watch it for a long time and um, yeah, maybe ref referring to this, um, talking about this character, I, I found it so amazingly precise and smart, observed how actually teenagers and all of them the same they just have different strategies to cope with a society which is just about concurrence and being a winner or a loser and trying to stay over water um yeah so i don't know if it's really a question but i, I think this is this is um really uh, yeah amazingly beautiful how how you did this and thank um, you I I was Thanks. just curious because there's maybe like two points which are suddenly like a plot, y yeah, and it's necessary for the. F or I don't know if it's necessary, but like the moment when the the smarik jumps and then there has to be an end because it's a linear film, and both of these moments have a kind of. Yeah, I was just thinking if you really also had a. I, I, it works well, but I, it's. Uh, if you were struggling with, okay, how do we actually in this whole thing, like observing, creating, a, showing a world or a society, ways how people interact with each other, and then there's suddenly a decision and something, you leave the audience out. You understand what I mean? I, I, j I was just curious about yeah. your thoughts about it. It's not really a question. I don't know if I completely <laughs> understand the sentence, well, but thank you first. Uh, but what I like... Um, of course, this film, as I said before, um, maybe it has a minimal plot, but of course, like if someone dies, it's it's in a way it's a huge plot, and um, for me, it was always something I was struggling with because my main interest was in observing characters, and I I was not really happy with murdering someone for observing characters. This was always a dilemma, and the idea was for the second film, I don't want to murder anyone. Um, I want to like let them alive. But um, in a way, sometimes it helps if you have something like this and then it gives you freedom to, uh, to discover something. So thanks a lot for being here. I just wonder if there's anything you want to say, uh, if, you, if you feel like there's anything that has not been spoken about that you would like to speak about. Um, yeah, if, if, you, um, if you enjoyed the evening, maybe you go on to the next film um, of mine, which will start in February in Berlin. It's called A Voluntary Year. And I wish some will go to the movies because it's difficult to get people in in the cinemas nowadays. And I, um, yeah, that's everything I have to say. <laughs> okay, so thanks a lot. So thank you very much for, for being here again. Um, the evening will continue continue on the terrace. Uh, there, the bar is open. There's beer and wine, etc. Uh, we are happy to see you there. You will be there maybe as well to continue the, the chat. One thing from our side: our next evening is on the seventeenth uh, of February. Um, it will take place in the Arsenal this time. It's our first partnership with the cinema, just downstairs basically, and it will be Bungalow from Ulrich Köhler. So. We are not getting too far away from what we have had here. So that's the next evening on the 17th of February. So thank you uh, again, Stefan and Hannah. And um, see you on the terrace.